Today on Carpentry with Up Is Not Jump, we're going to build a bookshelf. Jesus, Mother Mary and Joseph. We're going to be following a tutorial I found online, so let's just get started. Hi, I'm Andy Rainier, and today we're going to build this simple but elegant bookcase together. Adrian, I don't know if I should be using this handle. So today's workshop... Oh God, look at all those tools. What do I have? I really need to stock up. Just go ahead and set yourself up a safe and organized work area, and you're ready to go. Mr. Step here. What is this thing? Is that wood on it? Have you really capitalized the C in bookcase? What we have are two pieces cut 12 inches wide by six foot high. I think we're gonna need a bigger boat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these outside and we're gonna store them into smaller planks. Oh, well, never mind. The next day. <laughs> The police coming for me. <laughs> Sorry, officers, I'll keep it down. Why didn't I just buy smaller wood? I wouldn't say that line is as straight as it could be. Bit of mud, bit of water, that will come right off. I'm just gonna try and cut this little end off. Ah, oh, here's a cut line, so we'll just, we'll just do that. So I've marked up my wood, so that if I cut along this line, it will produce the planks in the sizes that he's talking about. I want a divorce. Sorry, darling, I can't hear you. I prefer setting myself on fire, I think. Well, the bucket, the bucket didn't really achieve anything. Okay, so we've cut up our shelves. Now we draw on our shelf markings. Let's go ahead and make some marks for our shelves. Okay, so we've marked in all our shelves. These marks will coincide with the bottom of this adjustable shelf hold jig. Coincide with the bottom of this adjustable shelf hold jig. Adjustable shelf hold jig. Adjustable shelf hold jig. I found this online. Grab our pencil and we'll transfer our marks for our shelves. <laughs> so then we can come back with our trusty old framing square. Good grief, man. Careful with that. You're going to have someone's eye out. So we grab a trusty old framing square. <laughs> Fuck. Slice an eye out. Ah! I have an actual framing square. Put it on there and transfer away. It's just none of these lines are straight. I wonder why these lines aren't straight. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time for our adjustable shelf holes. What we have here is an adjustable shelf hole jig with four holes about an inch and a quarter apart, two inches in from the end. We're gonna use this to drill holes in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have 120 of these. It's now time for our rabbit cut. Rabbit cut? What is that piece of wood, Eddie? How could I ra 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 rabbit cut something I don't have? Honestly, that bit of wood hasn't been mentioned once, though it is vaguely mentioned in the comments. So now we know the measurements of that shelf, we'll put it onto the saw table and we'll cut it up. So these are both shelves, so we're gonna cut them down the middle to make two shelves. It won't fit on the table saw, so we're gonna do it outside. So we're just going to clean up this line. So we've just finished cutting up all of our shelves to put into the bookcase. And oh, would you just look at those cuts. Only years of experience will get you those cuts. Now what we're going to do is notch out the back for our little one. Oh yes, of course. Well, well. So that cut's going to be a quarter of an inch by three eighths of an inch. So what we did is we brought the height of our blade up to a quarter of an inch and we set our fence so it's going to cut out three eighths of an inch. We're not going to do any of that. Okay, let's go ahead. Make it safe? What? No, how do I make it safe? I need details, Eddie. All he did was move a tape measure. So we'll go over here and make it safe. We're ready. <laughs> so what he's doing is he's making a notch in the wood so that when the backing goes on the bookshelf, it like slots in. We're almost done with our bookcase side prep work. What we're gonna do next is look at our permanent. Let's go ahead and put a center line on that shelf. Center line. Transfer it to the side. Transfer it over to the side. There's so much burnt wood here. I have no idea why I'm doing this. Then what we do is we come back with our handy dandy little drill motor with our handy dandy little drill bit. This is a uh, pilot hole for a number eight wood screw and it has the countersink already on it. Oh good, I was worried about the countersink. What the fuck is a countersink? So I just Googled what he said and I bought all of these. Okay, let's go ahead and drill away. Yeah, let's put this bad what boy the together. Fuck? Who is that jump cut? What wizardry have we missed between these two shots? So this week we're gonna take our egg, apply a 2.7 countertop inversion. See you next week. Oops. Now with a good bead of glue, some clamps and some screws, 
we'll put this bookcase together with you. Remember, if you want to make a bookshelf that shines, So now we're going to screw the top and the bottom of the bookshelf in and as you can see we have our beautifully cut wood here. So we're just going to glue these bits together and then we'll screw them together. So let's put the screws in. It's not good. These are for Allen keys. <laughs> yes, he puts the clamp on and then he screws. Look at that join. Bellissimo. Now, man. <laughs> Let me make a really big pilot hole. So let's try it. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> there we go. A few minutes later. So these screws are an example of how good and bad life really can be. Oh my God, it's another triumph. Now we flipped the frame over and we went ahead and cut our Luan backing to its proper size. I think I cut this wrong. We're storing wood now. What is fucking happening? Our Luan backing. It's okay, it's okay, this is fine. Let's get through it. How did I get to this point in my life? Put this back together. She can't even take it, Mr. Wall. Fits like a glove. We just have to go ahead and nail it down. Bollocks. Ow! Hello, Ikea. Would you like to buy a bookshelf? So as you can see, we have our Luan packing. For our fascia, we have this three quarter inch pine cut to an inch and a half wide. So our pine's a bit long, so we're gonna Cut it using the, the table saw. <laughs> okay, so we've cut our pine into equal width pieces. We're gonna go ahead and put our pieces together with a square cut, or better known as a, a butt joint. Oh, finally. So we're laying our pine down, and we're gonna just make sure it's the right length. We're gonna mark it and cut it using a buzz saw. <laughs> what am I gonna do with this after this video? Let's go ahead and glue and nail our sides. So what we're doing at the moment is we've cut our pieces up into the right sizes to cover the shelves. And this is to just make the front of the bookcase look a little bit nicer. I don't know if we should really be using that. <laughs> look at that, solid as a board. It's now time to use our router. This looks nothing like mine. Actually, it's one of these. I've never seen one of these before in my life. Today we're using a quarter round router bit. This is just a piece of plastic. <laughs> what is this machine? Now before starting, always double check your router setting on a piece of scrap. Make sure you spend time on accuracy because if you don't, it could be a lot of extra work if it doesn't come out just right. This is how you smooth the fucking edges. Let's finish our shelving with our adjustable shelves. We have these cut an eighth inch less from front to back. So and three a quarter inch pine on either two side quarter of an inch of the inside of less. The final step is we're gonna put in our adjustable shelves. We're gonna glue some pine to the front and then we're finished. So let's put in our, our pins. I've written lols here. Where's my saw? Yeah. Carpentry is not, not for everyone. I didn't put the glue on. Oh god. Now I just need to have that stay there while I hammer in some nails. Why did I get into this situation? <laughs> Fuck! Can you hold this for me? Hold it steady! Let's just take this out. Please, no. There's glue dripping from above. This was your idea. You said stand it up and then glue it up. Now is not the time for laughter. We're making history. This is gonna be in a museum. You don't have to hold it anymore because I've got it this side. <laughs> All right, so I was using the wrong nails. I mean, we could just lie this down, but I feel, I feel like we can do this. <laughs> fine. It's fine. Great. Good job. Now that's a fine looking bookcase. Why does mine look like that?
hoodie I set on fire. Hello everyone. As you may have noticed, I bought quite a few things for this video. Fortunately though, this video was sponsored by Honey. Honey is a free online shopping tool that finds promo codes on the internet and automatically applies them to your cart, saving you, and me, thank God, money. I mentioned this before, but online shopping is meant to be the easiest thing in the world. You can do it in your pyjamas. Mine have stags on them. I'm running out of pyjamas to show you. I do wear clothes that aren't pyjamas sometimes. So when asked for coupon codes, why is it so hard to find ones that actually work? Well, with Honey, it's easy. You can't see it if it's on my lap. Let's imagine you're shopping online on one of your favorite stores, Amazon, eBay, even websites like Redbubble that do posters and stuff. When you're done shopping and you go to your checkout, if you have Honey installed on your computer, a little box will drop down and all you have to do is click apply coupons, wait a few seconds for it to scan all the promo codes on the internet and watch as the prices drop. It's easy. You see with YouTube the way it is demonetizing videos like Palpatine on a bad day, did it work? It's led me to sign up for Shutterstock, which gives me royalty-free images to use in my videos. Without Honey, this would have cost me £70.80 up front, but with Honey installed, I automatically saved over £10, just like that. Honestly, it feels really amazing, especially given that Honey is completely free. Also, those of you who have already installed Honey using my link that I gave out in the cooking video have already found over $6,000 in savings, which I didn't know until this morning, which is awesome. Overall then, by not having Honey, you're literally passing up free money. It's free and it installs itself in just two clicks. So if you go to joinhoney.com forward slash up is not jump, all you have to do is click. Click again and it's complete. So as I just mentioned, to get Honey for free, go to joinhoney.com forward slash up is not jump. And thank you again to Honey for sponsoring today's video. Mm -hmm.